Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I want to talk about Inktober. What is Inktober? Inktober is a drawing challenge that takes place in the month of October. And the drawing challenge is basically do one drawing per day for the entire month of October. And it needs to be in ink. Here are the official Inktober rules. Number one, make a drawing in ink. You can do a pencil underdrawing if you want. Number two, post it. Number three, hashtag it with hashtag Inktober and hashtag Inktober 2018. Number four, repeat all throughout the month of October. The whole concept of Inktober being, you know, practicing daily, getting into a rhythm, being brave and showing your work to people are just all things that I push on my channel, all things that I enjoy teaching my students. And so I thought that it would be great to go over it on my channel and encourage all of you to join with me. I plan on doing Inktober as much as possible. Despite the fact that I have two business trips during the month of October, why did I do this to myself again? Anyway, the point is to do everything in ink. Some people have asked, you know, the originator, Jake Parker, you know, whether it's cool to do Inktober on the computer through digital media. And, you know, obviously the base rules of Inktober is you can just to get you drawing. But he has said that, you know, the spirit of Inktober is the bravery to put down a mark that you can't undo. And yeah, you can do a pencil underdrawing, but once you put that ink down, it's there. It's super there. You know, you can't even like scrub it up like you can with gouache sometimes. It's really there. And so that's like a different mindset, which reminds me of my perfectionism is stupid mindset. The idea of just like, Put it down, do it, do it again, do it again, post it, share it. Don't obsess over every single thing being absolutely perfect. Listen, if my entire Instagram, if all I wanted to do was post things that only got the highest number of likes, I would only ever post life drawing. Okay, my nude figure drawing and my super fast pen drawing fashion illustrations, the scribbles, those get more likes than any other thing. But that's not what my whole life is about. That's not what my whole genre, my whole everything I like to do is about. So anyway, trying new things is a big part of what I do. Sometimes that means I get fewer likes on Instagram. So be it. I'm just going to keep trying new things. I'm going to drop a link to the official website in the description box below. And on there, you'll see the prompt list. What is the prompt list? So there is a prompt for every day of the month of October. And it's kind of like the starting point, the inspiration, you know, like a one word design brief. In this video, I want to go over how I, as a fashion illustrator, more than any other kind of illustrator, am going to approach Inktober and how I've approached Inktober in the past. I'm going to go over some of the materials that I use in the inks world. There's more than you would think, probably. And, uh, you know, to show you how I'm going to approach Inktober and these prompts. Okay, first of all, let's go over the materials. So you can approach Inktober with drawing or with painting or with some combination thereof. I'm going to show you a bunch of painting and drawing ink media. First up, some paints. Some like to call them a liquid watercolor, Ecoline. This is a great brand of inks. They call them liquid watercolor for comic, for calligraphy. And some call them drawing ink. To me, I don't know if there is much difference. I mean, in terms of performance and how they look and all these things. So I just kind of lump inks and liquid watercolors together. When you're working with inks, a couple of things to consider. One, you need a palette that has proper wells. Okay, so it'll hold liquid. I know some of you, this is actually technically a palette. I use this for more solid things like gouache. 
for something pure liquid like ink, you're gonna need something like this. Some brands do have the eyedropper, some brands do not. And so you're probably gonna wanna pick up a few eyedroppers. I got a bag of 24 of these for not that much money and just wash and reuse them over and over. So there's that. A while back I made a light fastness test video with five of the brands here and uh, the other ones I bought after I made that video. <laughs> but I'll drop a link to that light fastness video below. Now, there's a bunch of brands here. Noodlers, this is Sennelier. They say it's ink and you can apply it with a brush or drawing pen. These are from Koh This one is a metallic ink. And they have a ball bearing in there, you can hear it, to shake up the pigment powders. Holbein, which I think wins the award for best packaging. And Higgins, did I go over every brand? Windsor Newton. When you're shopping for inks. I mean, there are great, there are a lot of brands here. There are a lot of great brands that I don't have here. Okay? But I think that the number one thing you have to think about when you're buying inks is whether you want pigment-based inks or dye-based inks. Here's a great example. Higgins makes both pigment-based and dye-based inks. So keep that in mind because their packaging is not that different. You have to really read the label. Anyway, so this bright one is pigment-based ink, and this duller one is dye-based ink, and this is how different they look. See, this one says dye-based ink. This one says pigmented ink, but you can't see it because here are the blue ones. You can't tell the bottle color difference as much as the yellows, but here's the dye-based ink, and here's the fade-proof pigmented drying ink. So in terms of performance, what does that mean? Pigment-based inks are powders suspended in a liquid, and you usually want to shake them up before you start using them. Dye-based inks are chemical-based, and they're just the liquid. So it's like this. Like, dye-based inks are like milk. Milk is milk. And you have to do something, you have to add something in order to separate milk, because milk is milk. Pigment-based inks are like when you add a powder juice mix to water, like Kool-Aid, and you have to shake it up or stir it up real good before you drink it. And if you kind of let it sit for a long time, some of these juices and these powder mixes, like emergency, the powders will settle to the bottom and you have to shake it up again, right? This yellow one, it stays suspended pretty well. I don't have to shake it very often. I do it just out of habit, but... Look at this one. This gold, it settles really fast. You can see how there's that bright gold layer of pigment powder sitting at the bottom and how the liquid is sitting on top. And I shook this like mm, 10 minutes ago and it's already settling like that. So you would have to shake this one up every single time you use it. But when you do shake it, look how pretty it is. Pigment-based inks are fade-proof, uh, whereas dye-based inks have more color payout and greater color range. I think Higgins, the, the pigmented inks, they come in like nine shades, and the dye-based inks come in like 16 shades, something like that. If you are one of the many artists out there who love to paint an illustration and then scan it into the computer and sell prints, do you need to worry so much about fade-proof? Probably not. You can take your original, stick it in a dark drawer. It will fade, but much more slowly than if it was, you know, up on a wall in a sunny room. If you are someone who is painting with inks and you're selling the originals to people to hang in their homes, then you are probably more concerned with them being fade proof. Okay, so whatever your needs are, you have to think about it like that. Now, I do not work with inks and pen nibs. I've never had a reason to use pen nibs, so I just haven't. I do not need another category of art supplies to geek out on. <laughs> but I have heard that some pigment-based inks, some of the powders are so big that it slows down the flow of the ink through the pen nib. So if you are someone who uses pen nibs, that might be something you need to do further research on. And then more, okay? This is the fine liner and brush pen category of inks. 
if you're more into drawing and you want to do more drawing Inktober stuff, you can use one of these many awesome fine liners. So these are fine liners. They're typically made out of pigment ink. The tips look like that. Some brands have different colors. This one is very skinny and it's a nice, beautiful, warm, light brown. This one's from Prismacolor. I have fine liners from Copic, Staedtler, Sakura Micron. Also in the drawing and writing category, I have these brush pens. This one is from Pentel, and this, from, this one is from Kuratake, and they both work the same. They're these nylon bristles. There's ink in this barrel, and you squeeze it for more to come out. I'm not going to do it now so I don't dribble everywhere, but... Word of caution, I recently discovered that you got to be careful when traveling with these because uh, this one leaked because <laughs> the water, uh, the air pressure and it squeezed in and yeah, it didn't make a huge mess. It did make a mess. So if you do travel with these, I recommend putting them in their own like little Ziploc baggie and not letting it roll around with everything else. This is a Copic Gassin Food. You know I'm terrible with pronunciations. Okay, This is also a nylon tipped brush pen. And this one is also fantastic. I use this as often as the other two I just showed you. And uh, But this one doesn't have a squeeze barrel. This just flows. These two are also from Kuratake and they work just like the other brush pens, but they're metallic. So I have these Kuratake Zigs here. And first I bought one. And then I bought three more, and then I bought, how big is my box? Just really fun to paint with. I have a making mistakes with brush pen video that belongs to my Perfectionism is Stupid series. I'll link to that below. But I enjoy coloring with these a lot, and I enjoy them alone, and I enjoy using them with my water brushes. These are just nylon tip brushes and you put water in here and you squeeze for more water to come out. And I love doing all kinds of gradients and washes and blends with different watercolors, but especially brush pens. Sai is another brand that I picked up and fell in love with when I was in Japan. And now I have a bunch of these as well. And I don't know which one I like better. Last but not least, at least in my arsenal anyway, these are the Ecoline brush pens. So I actually really enjoy the Talons Ecoline liquid watercolors. So when I saw these brush pens in Jerusalem, I was like, oh, I need these. I need these real quick. And I, I brought them home. I played with them. I enjoyed them so much. I went and bought more colors. The blendability, the color payout. I played with them with the water brushes. Just super fun, really beautiful. So yeah, you have a lot of drawing and painting options. So each day in October has its own prompt. And I will include the link to the prompts list in the description box below. And the prompts this year, well, every year there's a huge range and they range from like poisonous, whale, gift, double, bottle, chicken, Yes, one of the prompts is chicken. Longtime viewers know how I feel about chickens. Yeah. All right. So if you get stuck on a prompt, what I end up doing usually is a mind map, a brainstorming mind map. So let's say, okay, day six, the prompt is drooling. No, really. How do you draw drooling? Okay, what are the first things you think about? I think about dogs, drooling dogs. I think about babies. I think about, you know, gross things. One time I went on this camping trip and there was a freshwater spring where people could get their drinking water and it was called dragon's drool. Anyway, so think about in those terms and then you can start thinking about, okay, so when it comes to fashion, when it comes to wearables, where do these things fit in? Okay, maybe you put them together. Oh, y'all remember, um, all right, 
this is one of those things where, are you old enough to remember? I made that song up. My songwriting skills are on point. Yes? Okay. Do you remember Cabbage Patch Kids? And then they had the Garbage Pail Kids, the gross version. Okay? So I would connect those and those. So what if you drew like a gross drilling baby wearing a ridiculous bib? So maybe I just draw a cute little baby. And it's drooling. And it's wearing the cutest baby bib. And it says, hashtag practice not magic. Practice your drooling. Okay, don't practice your drooling. Let's do another one. When I think of the word chop, I think of karate chop. <laughs> so all kinds of martial arts, you know, poses, you know, leaping, flying kicks and stuff, their uniforms, and you could do all kinds of, what do they call them, keys? Yeah, I think. Well, some of them anyway. So think about the things that they wear. Think about fashion inspired by martial arts clothing. I also think about food. Pork chop, lamb chop. I do have a thing for uniforms and for fashion that is inspired by uniforms. I even have a book all about uniforms and the history of uniforms. So think about chef's uniforms. Day 15's prompt is weak. You can go about it a lot of different ways. You can think about deconstructed fabrics and fashion. You know, burnt things, shredded things. You could do some figure drawing where the pose looks all defeated as crap. So do your mind maps. Let your brain explore you know, this is not like a let's pick the most literal translation. It's just a word to help you get inspired and to move you in a specific direction. The prompt that I use for this dress is double. Double straps, double seams, double layer ruffles, double. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it fun or useful or helpful or informative or whatnot. And I hope you will participate in October with me with the rest of the illustration world, even if it's just for, you know, once a week, you know, just get into practicing. You know how I am. Hashtag practice, not magic. Hashtag always be practicing. Hashtag if your first one sucks, you're right on track. Hashtag perfectionism is stupid. All right. And don't forget to hashtag Inktober, hashtag Inktober 2018. And if you want me to see your stuff, hashtag drawing with Zoe Hong. And uh, yeah, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell as you do. And I will see you in the next video.